everybody, uh, Dr. Rick here, dropping in on you. Hope everybody has had a good day. Just leaving the cigar shop, didn't stay in that long. Uh, just hung out with the guys for a minute, about to head home and get a couple of things done. And I'm sitting up and I'm thinking, and I saw a post, man, and it was so on point that I wanted to talk about it because I think it's something that we really need to go into deeper discussion on. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to do it here, but uh, depending on the response, I may follow up on it. Uh, the post was real simple. It said that men are marrying bodies and women are marrying pockets and ain't nobody happy. Uh, first of all, let me clarify something. I, I, I don't think that sisters need to be marrying guys that are not capable of handling their business financially. And that all depends on where you're at in life, what stage you're in, where you're at. You need to know you're locking up with somebody that is capable of being a major contributor to where you're trying to go and what you're trying to do and what you desire to have. Uh, it's not just simply what he has, but his capacity to produce, his passion to produce. And you look at him and saying, hell, this guy's going to do something. Sometimes he's a little bit behind the eight ball, but you can see this guy's coming out. That's up to you. But no, I'm not in any way saying you need to marry broke dudes. That's not what I'm saying. And guys, I'm not saying that uh, you don't have to be attracted to a woman. What I'm saying is we got into a philosophy and over the last four or five years, and, it, and it, it, we slowly drifted that, but we got into a philosophy and with people like Kevin Samuels talking about, you know, basically determining whether a woman is, is quote unquote worthy of a high value dude was primarily based on what she ranked uh, in attractiveness. You know, you're a five, you're a six, you know, and are you a nine or you're a 10. And so, then the guys were being valued by whether or not they were six-figure guys. They were high-value guys just because they had the bag. And see, what happens is you got a bunch of people chasing the bag and a bunch of guys thinking that the prize is the nine and the ten. And what we're missing is there's a lot more that goes along with this equation. Women weren't looking for protectors. Women weren't looking for uh, people who could cover them. Women weren't looking for someone who could help them grow. Women weren't looking for someone who could pour into their spirit. Women weren't looking for priests and prophets. Women were looking for the bad. Men weren't looking for people who could nurture. Men weren't looking for women who wanted to offer up their spiritual womb and birth their vision into reality. Not by doing it for them, but by giving their spiritual intuition the thing they are naturally gifted to do. They weren't looking for that. They just wanted a, a, a trophy. They wanted something to say, this goes along with my bag. And so now they've assessor men are accessorizing the bag with a nine or a ten and women are sitting up and trading based on their pulchritude their outer beauty and they're not being forced to develop the things about them that make them super extraordinary outside of it man as far as i'm concerned black beautiful black women on the outside come a dime a dozen it's not that's not what I'm looking for. What I'm looking for is, is to see sisters that, that are caught up in the nature of who they are, the divine nature of who they are, the special things that they are able to bring to the world that no other woman can bring that makes them exceptional. With the, they, they put it down and then they start creeping off to places like the DR to get these uh, these surgeries. I can't think of what they're called. Brazilian butt lifts, the, BB, the BBLs. They're, they're running off and they're doing that. Why? Because that's going to help them get the bag. They're chasing the bag and don't realize the bag can be gotten by anybody. They can get the bag. They are missing the point. Yes, a man needs to be able to provide. Yes, a man needs to bring something to the table financially. Yes, a man needs to have a vision. 
absolutely 100%, but you're missing the point. Can he cover you? Can he speak into your life? Can he sit up and take you in a place where you are trying to come out and blossom and be the fertilizer and the nutrients that you need in your life? Because see, we are missing the point that men are not just muscular. Men are not just uh, 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 abrasive. Men have a softness about them that feeds the, 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 the vulnerability of a woman and gives her permission and her boldness to step out and become something that she may not be able to, we done sit up and got caught up behind physicality and finance. Now don't get me wrong, both are nice. As a man, I can tell you we're visual, but what I can tell you is you can get something beautiful and not have anything at all because you got caught up in the wrong thing. What do I see on the inside? What do I see? That's the one thing I used to say to my wife all the time is, look, yes, you're beautiful. Yes, you're attractive, but your heart, that's what got me. Look, let me tell you something. The problem with this is not only are we seeing relationships fall apart, but we are buying into this idea that a person doesn't add certain things. Yes, you are absolutely 100% responsible for your happiness, but I guarantee if you find the right person, they're contributing to it. Just is. But just because they have the bag doesn't mean that because what you're going to find out is a lot of times if the person isn't whole, the bag comes with a lot of other problems. What you're going to find out is that if the person isn't whole, they'll normally decide that because I have the bag, I have the right to do whatever I want to do. I see that so many times with clients who come to me. They think having the bag means I don't have to do anything else right but have the bag. I'm going to buy you this. I'm going to buy you that. I'm going to put you here. You can drive this, but then I'm going to mistreat you. I'm going to mishandle you. I'm not going to serve the needs you have outside of material things because I don't have to. I'm a high value dude. And on the flip side, she's sitting up thinking because I've got this sexy body, because I've got this beat up face that all of a sudden there's something that, 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 that you owe me. I don't have to bring anything to the table but this beautiful face and this gorgeous body. And, and so I miss out on the essence of who I actually am as a woman because I've been told that all that matters is that I be a nine or a 10. I've been told that all that matters is that I be able to get the bag. I've lost sight of what's, man, he's supposed to be a protector. He's supposed to be a provider. He's supposed to be a promoter. He's supposed to lift you up. He's supposed to talk about what you're good at, what you're special. He's supposed to speak into your life. He's prophesy. I don't mean like speak the future. I mean like speak into your life and tell you who you are and, and, and see it inside of you. He That should be something in him that sees something in you that you may not even see. There should be some times when you're feeling like you're about ready to give up and he speaks power into your life. He speaks boldness into your life. He speaks exceptionality into your life. And he should be standing before God concerning you on a regular basis because he's your priest. We marrying bags and bodies bags and bodies and, and everybody's miserable and everybody's losing and, and, and society is falling apart because the fabric of what holds us together has been tossed to the side. We are uh, using an old Hebrew biblical term. We are here trying to make brick with no straw. No, no, no fabric, no foundation, nothing to strengthen it, nothing to hold it together when times get rough, nothing to help it stand up against the weather, nothing. We're just sitting up and looking for what's external because that's what society is building up. Social media has got us chasing emptiness and we don't understand why we're miserable. There's got to be some substance. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I've been talking this for years and I'm not going to stop talking it. Black love has to be the foundation of what we build on and it cannot be built on superficiality. It cannot be built on whose body is banging and 
and how much paper he got in the bank. Because what I can tell you is if you're not careful, you're going to get to find out what happens when he don't have no paper. All right, you might find out just because he got the paper, he think he can treat you any kind of way. But then you might find out that he's an absolute bum without, pa without the paper. You take the paper where he has nothing to add. You got to be able to see some value in the person outside of their strength. Can you see how if he hits hard times, he's going to still be a source of strength, even though his strong suit is suffering? Can you see it? I'm looking around and I'm so disappointed at what we're doing as a people, as a society, as a culture. Nothing wrong with having an absolutely gorgeous person and being attracted to that person. But you got to know what's underneath it. You got to be willing to not only be appreciative of it, but be willing to nurture it, be willing to protect it, be willing to pour into it, be willing to be a part of its growth. That's what love is about. Everybody's reaching, everybody's reaching, everybody's tugging, everybody's grabbing. Nobody's pouring. Look, I mean, I could talk about this all day because it's a passion of mine. We have work to do. And one of the ways that we're going to have to do that is we're going to have to start to model love. We're going to have to reclaim it. We're going to have to rediscover it. We're going to have to reinvest in it. And then we're going to have to model it to the generation because the generation we have coming up now is cold. Why? Because they're witnessing us turn cold. They're witnessing us not be what we're capable of being in the area of love. And they are sitting up and they're looking at it and they're sitting up and they're going, it's, it's just about the bag. It's just about having a dime piece. It's just about showing what I got. A woman has become more of a possession than she ever has in the past. And the problem with it is in the past, she didn't want to be a possession. She wanted to be more. Now she's okay with being a possession as long as the one that's possessing her has the bag. Again, this is not me advocating for being with someone who is not going to be on their game. Someone who does not have a vision. Someone who is not out there pushing it and grinding and making things happen. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that can't be all he is. And brothers, we've got to start understanding that the bag ain't all it is to it. There's so much more to manhood that we're missing. We've lost the emotional ability to bond because we're emotionally empty. We are emotionally dry because we've been told we are not allowed to have it. Now, I'm not saying we're supposed to be overly emotional. Absolutely not. But we should be able to manage our emotions. We should be able to manage uh, our ability and have an ability to control our tempers and, and all of that. But we should still be able to emotionally connect and bond with our women and our children. That's so important to our willingness to stand up and fight and protect them and defend them and love on them and, and do all the things that are required of us outside of simply putting the money in the bank account and paying the bills. What are you speaking into her life? How do you handle her? How do you talk to her when you're not happy with her? When she's having a moment of uncertainty and insecurity how do you move in that space to give her courage and confidence sisters it's all good when the bag is flowing but what happens when there's a down month or a down couple of months or maybe even a down year how do you speak to him how do you handle him how do you touch him your words are affirming. How you sink into him physically is affirming. How you lean into him emotionally is affirming. How are you shoring him up? Bodies and bags. 
No, no, no. We've got to we got to do better than bodies and bags. Anybody with will and drive can get the bag. Anybody with enough discipline and 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 commitment can get the body without doing it in a way that risks their health. But I'm going to tell you as a black man the most attractive part of a woman is the softness and the trust and the willingness to be able to speak to you when you're feeling at your lowest in a way that confirms, affirms, and lifts. Same with a man. How you handle her when you're down speaks volumes. How you speak to her when she's down speaks volume. Your character should be measured by the continence of your woman. Let me tell you, I'm in a, and I'm done. Let me tell you, it's easy to sit up and get caught up in this social media storm that's redefining uh, culture, that's, re that's redefining how we look at each other, that's redefining what we demand of ourselves, that's redefining uh, how we move and how we operate, how we love, how we parent. We're going to have to rediscover ourselves. We're going to have to look deep within. We're going to have to search our heritage. We're going to have to look at the demand on us to love. I don't mean that in an emotional sense. I mean that in the deepest sense of benevolence towards those that we are supposed to be committed to and care for. Love beyond love. Love on top of love. Love even when you don't feel love. You got to learn how to love again. Because everything that we're talking about building has to be built on top of that love. And if we don't do it, we're leaving behind a world that's worse than we found it to our children. Because we didn't protect it. We didn't develop it. We didn't groom it. We didn't advance it. We just sit up and we picked it apart. We fell apart in the process. And we left them trash. And we really expect them to do it, be okay. Some people don't even care. You know, I'm going to be dead anyway. I care. I care about my great grandkids, grandkids. I care. Because I should be the one setting the stage. I should be the one laying the foundation. I should be the one setting the standard. What we expect, what we do, how we do it. And we, brothers, we should be calling each other on this. We should want more of ourselves because it's more to give. Let me tell you something. God, I've said I was I was gonna wasn't gonna do this this long. I don't care how good you are. The one thing that has allowed me to do some unbelievable things in my life that nobody can ever take away from me. You know, people can say what they want to say. People can, they can't take what I've done. They can talk about me. They can say what they, but they can't take what I've done. But let me. You want to know why I've been able to do it? It's because I wake up every day knowing I don't know everything. I wake up every day knowing that while I've done some good things, I haven't even scratched the surface. So I wake up every day demanding that I be better. And what does that mean? It means while the world may look at me and say, man, you're doing pretty good. That's wow, that's great. It's not satisfactory to me because I know there's something in there. And that's the thing that we as men are gonna have to start pushing one another and holding each other accountable for is, yeah, brother, you're doing this, you got the bag, but what about this? Yeah, you're doing this, what about that? You should want to be the best you can possibly be, not just good enough to hold something, but so good that there's no other option. You have a responsibility to yourself. My responsibility has always been, number one, to be the best man I can be. Um, and that's never going to change. And so my challenge is to every person that watches this, sit down and think about it for a while. Don't get caught up in your feelings. Uh, you know, I think that we got so superficial 
in the way we defined ourselves and the way we defined ourselves in a high in a high capacity. You know, I make this amount of money, that makes me high value. I look like this, so that makes me high value. A high value man wants me solely because I look like this. Well, no. I'm a high, I consider myself to be an extremely high value man and I'm gonna need more, way more than looks, especially at the point and stage I'm in my life. I, I'm gonna need some things. And I think that we have been convinced to take a cheap route in life on a superficial level that produces nothing of intrinsic value, nothing that we can pass on to the next generation and the generation after that. And we are going to suffer as a people for that. On that note, look, I'm going to get out of here. Uh, some people are going to like it. Some people are not. But whatever it is, I am going to stand on what I believe because I have. I, I think I put enough time and study into understanding what's going on. And I've been predicting this. So this isn't new to me. This is something that I have feared because I looked at where we were headed and we are here. And the thing is, the only option we have now is to rediscover and reinvest in love. And on that note, look, I'm gonna get ready to get out of here. Uh, also, if you believe in the work that we're doing at the Odyssey Project, look in the description box, click the link and show some love by supporting us financially. Uh, that's my challenge to you. Um, we've got a lot of work to do, obviously, and I'm committed 100% and I would love to have your support. On that note, I'm out of here.